Hey, good morning YouTube. It's Pat with ADV PPG Adventure Paramotor. I'm up here in Acumba in eastern San Diego up in the mountains here. We're going to fly down the Carrizo Gorge today and we're going to check out the Goat Canyon Trestle which is supposed to be one of the biggest wooden train trestles in the world. And uh, we're going to check out a little piece of San Diego history. This train line was completed in 1919 so it's about 100 years old and it's been abandoned about 10 years. 21 degrees up here. It's pretty cold. So the plan is we're going to take off here from the Acumba Airport and then fly fly down the uh, Carrizo Gorge, check out the train tracks, the trestles and the tunnels, fly down to Agua Caliente and land at the airport there. We'll see how cold it is. I have a feeling that I'm going to get really cold today. A little bit of a breeze. This should be good. Make it a little easier to launch. All right, first try. I'll take it. Woo! It's a Mexican border right there. There goes Cliff. Woo, it's chilly. My face is getting cold already. I don't think tying my shoe is gonna be possible. Oh my God, dude, my hands are so cold already. This is not good. I've only been flying for like three minutes. Check out all this abandoned stuff over here. It is cold, man. My fingers are freezing. And to make matters worse, my shoe is untied. But the good news is it's nice and smooth. I borrowed this Cisco 175 from Casey at Sky Toy. Thanks to Casey for hooking it up for that. This train line starts in San Isidro and goes all the way out to El Centro. Oh my God, my hands. Oh man, my fingers like hurt, they are so cold. My hands are so cold. Oh my goodness, my hands are so cold. Oh, this hurts. There's a nudist camp over there, we'll go too close to that. Oh man, I need to get like some hand warmers or something. Oh my god, I can't believe how cold my hands are. Oh god, my hands. Nice and smooth. Too bad it's so damn cold. So there's some abandoned train cars that are parked along this train line here. Back in 1906, there was a big earthquake in San Francisco, and there was a guy up in San Francisco named John Spreckles, owned lots of properties and businesses. So after this earthquake, it destroyed a whole bunch of his uh, businesses. I apologize if I'm yelling. Uh, rather than rebuild, he decided to just move to San Diego. So when he moved to San Diego, he saw the potential to move goods from the coastline out into the desert. Check out this trestle here. At the time, there was a train line going from, I think it was Los Angeles, like out to Yuma, but nothing connecting San Diego. So him and some other people start the San Diego, Arizona Railway. Rock slide right there. There's a tunnel right there that was collapsed. This is the longest tunnel right here, which is concrete. So in 1965, there was a student driver that was going too fast around this turn here, and these cars got derailed. You can see it's a Coors car. And they derailed to the inside and they pushed them off. They just pushed them down the gorge, which I thought was funny. They didn't try and salvage them. So on with my story. They started building this stretch of train tracks in um, 1907. It took them 12 years to complete 150 miles of train track. The Carrizo Gorge here is 11 miles long. I mean, look, can you imagine back in the early 1900s, just coming through here with dynamite and black powder, blasting through these mountains to build a train line. 
back before they had computers or any really type of advanced technology, all the math and the planning is done by hand. You can see there's like a little access road that was for the workers. You'd live along the sides of the hill or down at the bottom. You'd hike up from your camp up and you'd be dynamiting and you'd be living with rattlesnakes and cactuses and rats and bees and oh that sun feels good. It's finally starting to warm my hands up a little bit. So they called this the impossible railroad because it during the construction there were so many problems and even after it was built they had so many problems with fires burning the timbers and the tunnels landslides washing away trestles flash flooding out in the desert and i apologize if my history isn't exactly correct oh, look at this <laughs> what that is so sick how else are you gonna see something like this? This would not be a good place to lose a motor. This is this tunnel collapse is the reason that they had to build the uh, the trestle. So right around this turn here should be the uh, Goat Canyon trestle. Sick! There it is. Hell yeah! There she is. So this right here is the other end of that tunnel. There was some kind of massive landslide and the tunnel, the whole tunnel like separated from the mountain. And that is the reason that they had to build the uh, this trestle here. Check that out. How f sick is that? Yeah. I tell you what, man, this is way easier and more fun than hiking out here. So that's the water tank for the fire extinguishing system. And then that's the end of the tunnel there that collapsed in the landslide. You can see it's all crooked and messed up. I've flown over the trestle a handful of times already, so I, can, I keep smelling my two-stroke oil. After that tunnel collapsed, I want you to guess how long it took them to build this trestle. Well, they actually had to build a new tunnel right over there and build this trestle. If it was today, it would take years and years for them to build this. But back in 1932 when this happened, it took them 101 days to build. Oh, keep off, no trespassing. <laughs> they put no trespassing signs on the bridge, how about that? It took them 101 days to build this train trestle and that tunnel. How crazy is that? Check that out. Just completely collapsed. right through the tunnel. Imagine being out here in the early 1900s and just seeing this and then thinking like, oh, this seems like a good place to put a train track. <laughs> but they did it.
we made it to Agua Caliente Airport. It was a great flight. It was cold, super cold. 21 degrees when we took off. My hands were painfully cold. Out here in the desert, it's probably about mid 60s. It's very comfortable now. So now we're gonna get in the van, go drive back up to Acumba and uh, head on home from there. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like it, share it with a friend who might be interested in paramotor flying or share it with someone who likes trains. I can't believe it only took them 100 days to build that trestle and the tunnel connecting it. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you next time on the next paramotor adventure. See ya.